How would you define the toxicity of a particular substance or compound? Do we have a specific definition of poisonous substance or any toxic compound? No, any substance can turn out to be extremely harmful or poisonous at some or the other point at some or the other dose, right? Now, today's sequel of discussion is preclinical tests done to evaluate the safety and toxicity of a drug, better to call it as a chemical substance or a chemical compound at this point of time, we cannot call it drug. This is the next level after the screening is over. Welcome all to this Pharmacology Difficult Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Radhika Vijay, MBBS MD, Pharmacology. And this is the audio hub to get the best simplified basic tips, strategies, methods, and lots of ideas to learn better, understand better, and make your concepts crystal clear. If you really find and if there's a question hovering in your mind, is pharmacology difficult? Lend your ears for a while and let in the magic of knowledge. Let's figure out the fundamental facts. First, the intermediate testing stage in between the screening and the clinical testing is the topic of the day, that is the preclinical testing. Second, none of the substances, none of the compounds, they are certified as safe. All have a degree of safety beyond which anything can turn out to be extremely harmful or poisonous. When these possible toxic levels, they are actually worked out via the standard tests and studies and associated harm is estimated in order to further modify or test or evaluate the clinical aspect deeply, this stage of testing it is termed as preclinical testing. The preclinical testing involves orderly testing stages of first acute toxicity which generally involves two species of animals and two routes of drug administration it aids to define the no effect dose now i will tell you what is the no effect dose that is the maximum dose at which the expected toxic effect is failed to be observed or failed to be seen hope you got this definition That is, it is known as no effect dose. And the acute toxicity studies, they are also helpful in evaluating the maximum tolerated dose, which is abbreviated very famously as capital MTD. And sometimes acute dose is also identified via the acute toxicity studies. Now, what is this acute dose? It is the lethal dose in half of the animals which are tested now these are the three definitions one for the no effect dose i told you then we have maximum tolerated dose and the third one i gave you the definition for acute dose second important stage of preclinical testing involves the subacute or the subchronic toxicity again in this particular stage Two species of animals they are considered but now three doses are taken into account. Now after around three weeks of vigorous testing procedures, the clinical trials they are done. If the subacute subchronic toxicity durations they are long, so are the trials. If one is long, the other is equally longer. This hard work is good to know the variety of biochemical and physiological profile of the drug that is the essence and that is the importance of subacute or subchronic toxicity third point what next we'll have chronic toxicity studies now on the third stage it takes into account one rodent one non-rodent animal species The duration of these chronic toxicity studies is longer than semi-annum or you can say longer than around 6 months. It is done generally for the longer acting drugs. 
These studies they run parallel to the clinical trials and they help in the prior subacute or subchronic toxicity studies to further work out the biochemical and the physiological drug profile. What are the next steps? In the next steps, the two species of animals they are considered generally one is taken rabbit and the other animal is a rodent. The tests they are conducted to estimate the, re the reproductive potential and profile of the animal. Variety of body processes like reproduction, young ones, birth, their related complications or birth defects and further the postnatal behavior of the animal, all these processes and behaviors they are worked upon. In the next steps, on further levels, the another aspect of great importance is to have a knowledge of the carcinogenic potential of the drug. For this particular testing, two animal species, they are tested for around two years. The focus is completely laid upon to determine both the gross and the specific tissue pathologies. Lastly to state, how can we forget the evaluation and testing of drug for its genetic variability or mutagenic profile? That is very important nowadays. And so it was in the olden times. Variety of procedures, especially to account for, they are AMIS test, capital A M E S, AMIS test. In the bacteria, it is done to study the mutations, etc. Then various cell culture techniques are performed. Important tests are done and studies of the carcinogenicity in the rodents is done especially in the mouse now quick points to note and few definitions to know they are as follows first definition is of mutagen mutagen they are substances which have the potential and they induce the mutations the examples of such mutagens they are radioactive substances ultraviolet rays x-rays etc second term to know is promutagen. As the name indicates, it promotes the mutagen formation. Third important term, genotoxin. Substances causing the DNA or the chromosomal defects or damage, they are known as genotoxic substances. Now, what you have to note down and always remember is one line. All mutagens, they are genotoxic. But not all the genotoxic substances, they are mutagenic. I hope you got the sentence very nicely. Next important term or definition you ought to know is aneugen. A-N-U-E-G-E-N. These are the substances they lead to aberrant or disturbed or abnormal chromosome number. Just to remind you, I'm focusing on the numerical aspect of the chromosome. So, antigens, they lead to abnormal chromosome number in the daughter cells and the process is known as aneuploidy. Next important term, clastogen, C-L-A-S-T-O-G-E-N. These are the substances which induce breaks in the DNA or the chromosome. The chromosome is divided into paths Many processes can occur at this particular moment. Addition, deletion of genes or even rearrangement can occur. What are the examples of clastogens? Substances like arsenic, acridine, yellow, vincristine, benzene, they all are clastogenic substances. Now how are these clastogens, they are different from aneugens. Aneugens actually lead to numerical changes in the chromosome. See, I told you that. We are the interactions with the cellular targets. Now, this is another important point. For your kind of information, aneugens, they are not interacting with the DNA. They are actually exactly not targeting the DNA. They are targeting other substances like proteins that are involved in the processes like mitosis and meiosis. 
So antigens, they have interactions with proteins during the processes of mitosis and meiosis rather than directly interacting or exactly interacting with DNA. But DNA is the target of the clastogens. That is another difference. Next important term or definition, mini lethal dose. Mini lethal dose is the smallest amount of drug that is capable of killing an experimental animal. Next important definition, median lethal dose, which is also abbreviated as capital LD50. It is a drug amount which kills around 50% or half of the animals in the test group. So one advice to know this median lethal dose or LD50, one should choose minimum number of animals. Now this is a good gracious account of preclinical testing. It was actually very interesting. That is my opinion. What's yours? Let's know some drawbacks or restrictions, some limitations about the preclinical testing. First. It takes too much of time and money and resources. Vigorous long duration tests they are carried out, they range from 2 to 6 years. Second important drawback, it's highly thoughtful and it's very kind to go for minimum number of animals for such studies. Replacement techniques like cell cultures in vitro testing Computer procedures tests they are trending in today's era rather than testing on the direct animals. Third important point. One limitation is of utmost importance that you cannot estimate or match all the toxicity results evaluated in the animals to be exactly similar or useful in human beings. Now, there's always a difference between the animals and the human beings. We cannot just exactly take the results from the animals and put it or evaluate or apply it directly on the human beings. It has to be tested on them separately. And always, the studies, they are not resulting as expected or as desired. Secondly, not all the toxicities, especially I'm pointing at the rare toxicities, they are not perfectly evaluated in animals and hence they are not useful in humans. Now that's for sure. Everything is not perfect or up to the mark. Now let's summarize these preclinical studies before I wind up today. First, it's done as per the good laboratory practices which are abbreviated as capital GLP procedures or guidelines. And why it is done that? To minimize the errors especially when these are applied in the human beings. Second important point, you just notice if around 10,000 substances they are screened, then from the lead compounds, we are only getting around 10 substances which actually qualify to form the typical new drug substance. So very few substances actually, they are really resulting as expected and desired after passing through all these preclinicals testing and before that the screening part. Third important point, pharmacodynamic profile of drug is evaluated in animals generally taking on to focus the intended the therapeutic drug use. The cellular level studies are done that I told you then after that the molecular level studies are done then after that these are followed by the graded assays or quantile assays and Finally, the median effective dose that is abbreviated as capital ED50, it is determined. After this pharmacodynamic profile is worked out, then all the levels of toxicological studies that I told you, from acute toxicity studies to the chronic ones, they are done as already stated. And lastly, after working on the carcinogenicity, etc., the test is also done for the local toxicity testing. Now, why we have to test the local toxicity? Because there are many drugs that are toxic when applied topically. So the variety of profiles studied for testing this kind of local toxicity or the dermal toxicity are the dermal toxicity studies, then dermal phototoxicity studies, ocular toxicity studies, vaginal toxicity studies or inhalational toxicity studies. 
many types of allergic studies they are done then there are many differences which are asked for the different routes of drug administration one of the examples i'm going to tell you is for the rectal route the rectal tolerance tests they are done to assess the severity of the rectal inflammation if the drug is given via the parenteral route then injection site inflammatory tests they are performed so these are all local toxicity testing studies that are done after that the pharmacokinetic profile of the drug they are studied we are the pharmacokinetic studies there are the next level testing performed in variety of animal species like dogs rats and even monkeys they are done all the four procedures absorption distribution metabolism excretion the adme profile is worked out the bioavailability test they are done t half or half life of the drug evaluation is done etc all related to the pharmacokinetic profile they are worked out all the testing analysis they provide valuable information statistics like median lethal dose ld50 median effective dose ed50 by knowing these values we can calculate the parameters like therapeutic index then you can assess the maximum tolerated dose abbreviated as capital mtd one can assess the no adverse effect level dose that is no capital ael dose then you can also work out the human equivalent dose abbreviated as capital hed and when these human equivalent dose they are worked out to fit to humans the next level step is to work out the first in human dose that is capital fih dose that is a later part of the clinical trials when all these stepping stones and rocky edges of the big mountain they are overcome the drug is set to pass through the preclinical testing it is now ready to be subjected to the clinical trials or the clinical test the various phases of the clinical trial so that the drug can actually become or turn into the medicine of the therapeutic importance then the drug will be converted into medicine with this statement i'm going to wind up today's topic this was the second topic the bonus topic that we are doing as per the celebration events of the international podcast day in this month of september with all the positive vibes and sending off all the good wishes we finally wind up today's episode for all the updates and latest episodes of my podcast do visit www.pharmacologydifficult.com where you can also sign up for a free monthly e-newsletter of mine it actually contains a lot of updates about medical sciences drug information updates and my podcast updates also you can follow me on different social media handles like twitter insta facebook and linkedin they all are with the same name is pharmacology difficult if you're listening for the first time do subscribe and follow whatever platform you are consuming this episode stay tuned do rate and review on itunes apple podcast stay safe stay happy stay enlightened thank you